Emergency. Queen's Best Arrived. Emergency. Queen's Best Arrived. Emergency. Queen's Best Arrived. down to the queens hello ladies gentlemen everybody inside and outside of the gender spectrum and welcome back to stardom quest gold the best weekly stardom podcast and Mary gold podcast anywhere in the world <laughs> i'm as always alex i don't know if you know this this is a podcast i don't know. Uh, <laughs> hi alex how how you doing i realized uh last week we didn't go over our like the one thing that we do every tournament which is the top matches of the five star we didn't even say a word on it i think that's yeah, very funny um, <laughs> yeah because i think it was a runaway top three anyway so we didn't need to um i don't think it changed well, was it the same um well number one i think was clear for both of us and then two and three were some variation okay. of mayu tam and saida so was your number one not to play no. Wait, what was your number one? Wait, no, we didn't. No, we're not. We are not clear on this. Let's 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 go through that right now. This is Star Wars. Whatever episode it was. Oh, Wait, my mom was my three. Oh. oh, okay, interesting. Right. And then my top two are Mayu Natsupoi and, and Mayu Ida. Mayu Natsupoi top two is crazy. I feel like it was top five ish, maybe, but that's about it. I have Mayu Tam okay. at my four. It's it's all Mayu matches. <laughs> my entire top five is Mayu matches. Hot take. <laughs> That's pretty fair. Yeah, she was kicking ass. Um, but yeah, we, had, this like is, the best um, match of the year a day later. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Mayu, Mayu's kicking ass. I was going to bring Little Blader as well because uh, I had an Anai thing to do. But yeah, uh, head on over to the five star network.co for all of the latest articles and podcasts from the wonderful world of pro wrestling. Head on over to the five star network YouTube channel, which is where this show goes up, Actress Stage goes up, uh, No Limit Wrestling goes up. All the shows go up on YouTube in some form or fashion. And you can leave comments and like tell us how smart you are. It's great. Um, we also, fun, we have a review, Dylan. Um, this is actually, the, I didn't the, know. The, the, uh, <laughs> my heart sinks every time <laughs> that I hear those words. And Hello. I'm getting so many notifications from Discord because some of you are texting in our goddamn chat and Peps is texting oh, me at the same that. time. So I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm getting. I'm concerned. I'm overstimulated, okay. and it's two seconds into the show. I'm, I'm gonna let you sit with that. I'm gonna let you sit with that. I'll be back in a second. So our review, it is a re-review. I didn't actually know you could do this. Um, it is somebody who previously reviewed the show and has re-reviewed it to change their mind. So change uh, their this... mind. <laughs> yes. So this is by uh, Krakow and Tay from the United States of America. And um, they previously said it's a bad show. Okay, they didn't like the show. But um, it then said, I continued listening since my first review, and it has gotten better, especially since Marigold started, and they seem much happier. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but that's funny, because, like, I don't know. I think think Marigold presented an interesting change of pace. To say the least, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it maybe it did make the negativeness about stardom, which has always been present. Ultimately, like there have been bad programs in stardom the entire time that we've been reviewing. Like it's it's not like this is a perfect company that went bad this year, um, inherently. So like it, I guess having one company that we're just kind of like a bit more lenient with and a bit more like we give the benefit of the doubt more often probably does even it out a bit more. You know what I mean? <laughs> Marco was just vibes. I don't know. Yeah. Don't do anything like outright bad. So I'm just like, yeah, it's, you know, it's whatever. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's Marigold, which is funny because I'm always like, we can't be too biased towards Marigold. You know, I know both, we're both riding the wave, but we have to be fair. And everybody is like, you two love Marigold. <laughs> it's like, okay, thanks. Um, not as much as Scott, though. That boy is um, Marigold Pill for Life. So, what was that? That is that is the review out of the way. You survived this one, that's, Dylan. That's that's lovely. Thank you for the review. Uh, we're happy that you that you like the show now, and, and you know, we try. 
do we? Not really. No, yeah, I didn't think so. Um, I'm trying to like close tabs because my Discord keeps being like, "Hey, your 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 connection's bad," and I don't know why. So this seems fine to me. So it's I don't I don't know us anything. Um, I guess starting with Stardom though, because they were they ran first basically, and it's it's the they have two big shows. Um, Well. That is horrendous. Um, outside of Stardom, like earlier that. today, Sai Ida and uh, Ryo Mizunami beat Chanyota and Zones in the a PPP Tokyo match. Uh, it is free on YouTube, so you can watch it on the PPP Tokyo uh, channel. It was a very good match. If you've seen Ida and Chanyota before, I mean, you know what to expect. It was it was really well done. Uh, Ryo Mizunami rocks as well. I mean, she's great. So it was all four of them just doing big hoss wrestler things and throwing chops and throwing lariats, and it was it was very good, very fun. Yeah, and I think I think zones when she has three good wrestlers, they're kind of her style in there as well. I think she usually does better than she does elsewhere because um, zones is is a bit inconsistent of her wrestlers. Uh, I like her, but she isn't the most you know. Uh, she isn't the consistency of her opponents. Let's say because Rima's Nami and Saida, notably. Two of the most consistent wrestlers in the scene today. So you know, I, I think even even her in there kind of works with the vibe. Um, I haven't gotten to see it yet. I am super excited to watch it. Yeah, all and, this shit um, happened like all this shit like went up and happened within the past like twelve hours, and it's like mm-hmm. I had a bad day yesterday. I didn't like I, I didn't stay oh. up. I, I had to wake like you know it was it, was, it, it uh, why these companies are fucking me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with the, no, with sure. with the. With the Tuesday releases, that's what I mean. You could have said fucking with me instead of... No, okay, I didn't mean... Okay, you're the weird one there. These companies are trying to fuck on me. Yeah, these... (laughs) (laughs) These companies, they're trying to fuck on me. Uh, Shout out to Junior. Cody Rhodes has ever contributed (laughs) to the world was, was explaining that one, letting us all know. Um... But yeah, so um, Ria Mizunami was like, hey, Saida rocks. I'd love the team with her more, which excites me greatly. Uh, get mm-hmm. Anaki in here for Tag League. Let's do it. Um, and Chanyota, she retired oh. from her adult video work. Yes, and she did. now wrestling and bodybuilding, essentially, as her full-time thing. So yeah. we might see a lot more of Chanyota, which is great. Um, we've been on the Chanyota train for ages. She's just a great power wrestler. I think she's really, really interesting. Um, and if she gets to work stardom more, I wouldn't complain. Honestly, yeah, I would love to see her in either of the top companies because obviously, right now, my Sakurai is tag champions with Mirai, but everybody knows her her real number one tag partner. Fuck Julia, fuck Mirai, it's, it's Chan Yoda. Um, so I would love to see Chan Yoda anywhere, pretty much. Uh, that's not PP, PP Tokyo. Um, but even in PPP Tokyo, she still gets some good matches, so I can't complain too much. They they kind of make her the the big star of that promotion. She main evented yeah. the show today. She's kind of like the we've got Chanyota. <laughs> like you want to show up because uh, they do have another women's wrestler. But she was gone for eight months and and only just came back. And the dudes are kind of bad. So they they kind of just are like, hey, this is Chanyota. This is our star. Here you go. And I think that's that's pretty nice. Oh yeah, I remember really after the. After the Wingori Yoda my match, uh, the president of PP Tokyo just like released a Tam level thread about how proud he was of Chan Yoda and how great she is and how happy he is that she's with this company. And I was just like, you know what? Maybe she should stay there just because like these motherfuckers love her. <laughs> like like this motherfucker is like he will he will fucking. He will kill his entire roster if it means Chan Yoda remains and is happy. <laughs> Maybe not kill. That More Chan Yoda. Yeah, that no, no, that's Yoda. that's very bad. But you know, Chan Yoda, Chan Yoda, good. PPP Tokyo, uh, good if you ignore all of the bad. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If you just kind of like Swiss cheese it, just look at the very individual spots, you're good. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's fine. Um. That is the only Stardom wrestler outside of Stardom thing that I can think of. Um, you know, Mina Shirakawa still exists. She's still doing lots of different stuff. But I don't think anybody's paying super close attention to Ring of Honor at the moment. So, I don't know. She's still not on screen on AEW on the main shows. 
um, because Mariah May is defending against Queen Aminata instead, um, which Ooh. is great. Love yeah. that. Queen Aminata That's is cool. Good. But uh, yeah, I thought they might do Mar- uh, Mina, but they did not. So maybe at some point they so, don't seem the show. They don't seem high on Mariah May anymore now that the story's over, which is not great because she's their world champion. But they're just um, yeah. I think they want to wait for the January stretch to do her big matches, which means she has to meander for three months. So that's not yeah. fun for her. But you know they are doing the the Australian show, which is where I imagine. Tony Storm gets a rematch, and then they probably do a, a Mina match in January at some point. So, you know, you kind of have to fill time until then, which is man, I difficult. I I shouldn't wish this on us, uh, but they should get Zena on that show, on undercard match. Which one? Oh, uh, the, the Australian show. Yeah, that'd be fun. Actually, that'd be cool. Yeah, we'll just Maybe. get her in a just have her beat the fuck out of someone, man. <laughs> like oh, yeah. Zena's good for your product. Out. Yeah, they've got a lot of fodder there. It should be all right. Um, but anyway, we had one stardom show to review. as on September 8th in Cork and Hall. They did 1,022 fans. Relatively impressive number, given they had a high-speed championship match in the main event and not much else. Um, the opener... Well, they opened with an awards ceremony. I didn't watch the awards ceremony because I'm not, I did. not that into the awards. The main takeaway is that Saya Kamatani did the blur face to... Tanahashi, who was like, "Yeah, that's cool, man." It was and at that was... point that I was just like, "I think we've, I think we've lost the plot here." Um, but yeah, so also, somebody Miley was annoying Momo, like no, like there was yes. no tomorrow, and that is somebody, incredible. somebody who will not be named that works for Stardom, insisted that Anna J and Seriana were the same person. They are not. Yes. Uh, the the winner of the award was Seriana versus Starlight Kid, uh, and not Starlight Kid versus Anna J. Uh, in case any social media manager uh, needed needed the the reminder. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that the ceremony was like a fun little thing. It's it's cool. I think it's like the sixth or seventh year in a row. Uh, or yeah, it would be sixth year in a row. Five. However many years in a row that Azumi's won an award uh, in the five star awards. Uh, on top of her winning well, awards, she basically. Been in the tournament, so they gotta give her something. Yeah, but uh, on top of her winning awards and like every year end award as well, I think that's very funny that she has a trophy case full of shit and has never challenged for a top title um, yes. <laughs> in a singles match. <laughs> so that's yeah. lovely. But yeah, um, it was nice. It was a nice ceremony. I, Momo and yeah. Mayu were very funny. Yes, they they looked quite funny. And Saya, Saya got Tanahashi to do the face, which is kind of you know. Fun. He seemed very happy with life. He was like, "Hey, this is chill, man." So you know, it's probably easier happy. to deal with the the stardom wrestlers than it is the New Japan wrestlers. The New That's Japan wrestlers fair. seem like fucking divas, bro. I'm not gonna oh, lie. Dude. Every time I hear something about them, I'm just like, "Yeah, are y'all sure? <laughs> like, are you okay?" But here we go. Um. Anyway, shall we get into the wrestling? Sure. Okay. Uh, in our opener, Starlight Kid beat Rian in seven minutes with the Black Tiger Leg Destroyer. Uh, this was a good match. Uh, the, uh, you see the Black really Tiger saw... anymore. That's, that's, numero, that's numero dos, baby. Okay, that's well, you, you got to tell Starlight that because yeah. they, they don't agree. But uh, I thought this was a good match. I thought Rian showed her growth very well. Um, you could see just how many steps she's taken since her first match. She was a lot more, she was just a lot more involved. A lot, there was a lot more energy to what she was doing here than in her, her debut. And I thought Kid was a perfect foil for her because Kid is obviously quite versatile and she can kind of work the high speed stuff that Rian can do, but also could carry the rest of the match when she needed to. Yeah, I I, I, I didn't love this match. I thought that like Rian did look better than like her debut, for example. But I do think that she's had better matches with like Azuki. Um, so I thought this was a bit of a flat match generally um though i i do recognize rian's growth which is always important indeed um that's all on that our next match was aya sakura and sayaka karara beating rina and raka when aya sakura got the win over rina in seven and a half minutes with a um it says a horizontal shrimp hold which is yeah, just a really horizontal wrote. pin um so this was kind of as good as I was hoping it would be. Like the two Cosmic Angels wrestlers were just really good baby faces against the two heels. Uh, they really let Aya and Rina go at it, and I thought they did really well together. 
and um, the flash pin really sets them up quite well for a title match, which you'd imagine they're going to do soon because Rina yeah, did hold the belt up to Aya's face. And Aya said that she wants the belt. Oh. Um, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I you know I think the one kind of negative about this about about Young Kozen in general is that they have such cool offense, but they don't really get to do that much of it because they are such intrinsic, you know, uh, babyface and perils. You know, what I mean, like mm-hmm. that's just like what their role is. That like Aya could kill you, but she doesn't really get to. Uh, so that's that's kind of where my like issue with this match was, so to speak. I thought it was a, a solid match. I the pop for Aya winning was insane. Like that was like the yeah, biggest pop of good. the entire show. Uh the show, despite having a good uh number, was a bit uh just low vibes, I guess, from the crowd. Uh but that was one instance of them like freaking the fuck out because I got the win over Arena. So I was a big fan of, of that decision. Was there. the crowd bad or did they just have weird audio? Because the audio was it was, really it was both. I, I think it was a bit of both. And it would like pitch. It would like go full pitch. And I was like, all right, cool. Oh yeah, it would. It would. We we both know this because we both edited on Audacity. It would, it would go into the red. You know what I mean? Where it's like it. Yeah. It like hits too much. Yeah, I forget what the actual you know audio term is, but I think it is uh, it, it's it's either pitch or it's like. Yeah, that, that it probably is pitch. Um, but yeah, it, it the audio was weird, but I also just like just the crowd generally felt a bit lower energy than sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, just like from looking at the crowd, it felt like a bit more like you know, um, like a I'm trying to think of a word. <laughs> Easy, an Osaka show. <laughs> it, it, it felt like an Osaka show, yeah, which is not great for Cork at all. But this was one instance of them really, you know, going crazy for for a. a you know a spot in, in them i don't know i'm trying to words it doesn't work yeah they really went crazy for the finish and I thought that was cool okay there. that's good um yeah we didn't really realize that rena and her record-breaking the rain hadn't faced its biggest challenge yet which was the cosmic angels you know, well no gotta... she beat she beat carrara but then aya joined so you know you have another one so yeah i mean and i is like the best young young and in the comp- well, Rana. Yeah, her, turn, well, Rana. they're the only two young ones, basically. Well, Carrara and, yeah, and Hanako and Rian. The Carrara and Hanako seem a bit beyond it to me. I don't consider them young ones. Carrara debuted like a few months ago. <laughs> it's been nine months, but Are you sure? yeah. She debuted. She's the most recent debut outside Rian. No way. Rana debuted on the same show a match before her. Oh my god, that was her? Damn, I thought she was with the Hanako crew. That's crazy. All oh, right. <laughs> okay. that's Aya. Yeah, okay, I messed that up. All right, so, hi- yeah, okay. We're, we're all square there. Okay. <laughs> um, our next match was Mina Shirakawa beating Rani Agami and Saya Ida in 11 minutes and 40 seconds when Mina hit the glamorous driver Mina on Rana. 11 minutes? Yes, 11 minutes and 40 that seconds. That tracks. What? I did not like this at all. <laughs> I was fun. Come on, it was like well done. I, I felt like Rana I was felt kicking. Like... Ida was doing stuff. Mina was motivated. Her gear was lovely. Uh, Mina, what? when did you debut yeah. the blue gear? It is great. Today it was it was the show. Oh, it was the um, show. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that's cool. Because yeah, it was really nice. Uh, not today. This past weekend. No, I feel like Mina and Rana didn't really click as much as I wanted them to, and that was a lot of the match. And so I was like, I don't know, you could have gotten Eden in there a bit more. And like, you know, it, it went long, like 11 minutes is a long, long time for a triple threat match, especially when there's another triple threat match a few matches later, uh, which kind of made, like, I think I think having two triple threat matches on the same core can kind of made both of them a bit weaker in, in my view. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I just didn't really care for this. I, you, I, I saw you in the group chat saying, man, Mina, Mina came back and she, like, I, I think she might still have it a little bit. I was like, I watched the match. I was like, I don't know. Who you were never rocking with Mina. I do not. I do not take your your words for with any. I wasn't. No, no. You know what? What actually Even happened at her there? Best, you did not rock. No, with Mina. no, no, no. You know what actually happened there? What? Her best was in the the five star two years in a row. I was like, she's really sick in the five star. And then I didn't like the side match. Um, I loved the not spoil match. And then they were like, ha fuck you, we have Dab Nagato! And then Mina never did anything again. So that's that's not me. Well, that's on Tam. <laughs> <laughs> that's on Tam, okay. 
okay. All like, right. <laughs> um, Mina cut a promo afterwards that kind of indicated that she would be around a lot more, but she is going back to uh, <laughs> England for yeah, next month. So I don't know how much she's going to be around, but she was like, hey, everybody wants a piece of Mina. I love you guys here in Japan. She tried to get them to start a Mina Mina Shirakawa chant, but they did do some of that. They did do it. They did do it a little bit. Kind of. The, yeah. The music was so loud, but you can hear them underneath the music saying it. The yeah, Mina. It was a weird Mina, rhythm though. Mina Shirakawa. Ah, yes, it's the Brit rest, the Brit rest uh, yeah. pacing. Yeah, not not a fan, but yeah. Which all right. I think I think all things considered, I hate a lot of Brit rest chants. I don't mind that one from Mina and Mina being like, is that hey, Zach that, that's kind of cool. It? What? Does Zach, Zach doesn't have that one, that, didn't he? Does he not? No, it's uh Zach Saber Jr. No, he has another one. With that pacing. I don't think. I think it's only like I don't. I haven't heard anybody do a different chant for Zach Saber Jr. I don't, I don't except know. for fuck I the Tories. Like I've heard it before. Those are okay. the two Zach chants. <laughs> Uh, he has another one. He definitely does. But anyway, that, that's, that's besides the point. Uh, our next match was Suzu Suzuki, Azumi, and Miyu Amasaki of Neo Genesis beating Mayu Utani, Koguma, and Momo Kogo. Uh, Suzu got the win over Momo Kogo with the tequila shot in eight and a half minutes. Uh, I thought this was fun. They didn't like go crazy or anything, but they all did good work. Uh, Koguma, I liked the through line of Miyu Amasaki being like, I don't want to do the, ca- the, the, the Kuma stuff. All right. It tricked me with it last time. I'm not doing it. And then the crowd booed her and she went, fine, I, I will do it then. Uh, I thought it was funny. And Mayu and Azumi did a little bit of a preview and then Suzu was really good. So I think I think given this card, which I'm I'm realizing I was not actually that big of a fan of. <laughs> the more that we like go through it, I was like, uh, I think given that they definitely could have gone a bit harder. Um here because I think this is like just like the most tried and true. Not even tried and true, I mean Neo Genesis is a new faction. But it's the most easy, like great match generator possible is Neo Genesis versus Stardom or versus Stars right now. So I think <laughs> they could have gone a bit, they could have gone a bit harder and just like been like, oh yeah, this is a great match on the card. Um, but instead, it was just a, a, a good match. You no, know, and I liked it. I, I thought, yeah, I thought me use beef with the bear. Uh, shouts out the bears, bear down. Um, I thought me use beef with the bear was really cool. I thought it was very funny. And then like it was just a quick little match, wham bam, thank you ma'am type of thing. All right, that's good stuff. Um, we don't have a lot to say about this. I think this, this show just kind of happened and it was enjoyable, but there wasn't like a ton to dig into, which is fine. You know, like, I think you don't need, uh, I didn't really to be crazy. I didn't really take much from anything except for the main event. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, the main event was kind of the big one. Uh, our next match, anyway, was the hate team of Sayakamitani, Konami, Momotanabe, and Natsuko Tora beating. The God's Eye team of Siri, Saki Kashima, Hina, and Lady C. Konami got the win for her team over Lady C in 13 minutes with a knee to the head. Um, the highlight of the match was honestly Lady C and Saya. I am so into Lady I, C. I think it was one of those two. <laughs> but sure. yeah, um, like I'm so into this Lady C. I think her gear is upgraded. I think her work is upgraded. Like just if they wanted to do something serious with Lady C, I think she would be ready for it. Um, Maybe they will after her taking the pin here. They did kind of lean into her and Saya a lot. Um, but I don't know what they would do to kind of pay it off unless she's an early challenger for Saya if she wins a belt or something. I think that would be fun. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the main takeaway. I think the other part was Konami being like a squirrely shithead heel and running away from Siri all the time was kind of fun. You know, they're obviously playing that out for Siri to get her comeback and eventually. But yeah, that was kind of the main thing of this this tag it was kind of those two feuds i feel like the problem with god's eye is konami is that like Um, shuri isn't like like as in like none of god's eye has any like real chance of doing anything against hate outside of shuri beating konami and konami they miss ami sorry yes (laughs) yes i mean like you're you're correct But she and, was and that's the, the thing, two, undeniably, is that Shuri is aiming for like the fifth in command, like you know what I mean. So it's like none of this really matters that much. <laughs> I know that sounds like pretty reductive, but really, like I, I feel and like turned on her and cost her the belts, and and it's valid. 
and like the story is valid. But the problem is that God's Eye generally doesn't look that strong. Like you said, they miss Amisore just from a like power balancing level. Um, they definitely miss Amisore, but they feel so weak that like they can't even get their comeuppance against again the fifth in command in the in the evil group. Uh, I don't it know. Feels I think this kind was of the like... strongest hate lineup in some ways. Like their the pin eater was in a different match. Like this was Momo exactly. or uh, Saya Konami. Like you just and can't. This still wasn't that great of a match. I think that's also part of it. Is that it's like good. I don't really like God's Eye and Hate as a pairing generally. Like from a multi-person tag level, I think they're kind of bland. Uh, and and there's nobody to really liven it up. Um, outside of Konami and Shuri, which they don't use like like they do sometimes like liven it up and make it like really a, a heated exchange but like for cases like here it was kind of konami just deciding to be a little chicken shit uh and not really engaging much which you know story-wise makes sense but i just it it, it definitely lessened this match i thought lady c did look very good i i am a lady c fan and i have been and i'm happy she's kind of growing into uh this this role in god's eye mm-hmm. i think there's more room for her in God's eye. Uh, yeah, she should be the number two, at least like temporarily, um, until they get Amisori back. And even then, I think she should keep it. Lady, <laughs> um, Lady C is an interesting case because yes. it still feels like she has like she doesn't have much to her game, even though she does. Yeah, she's a bit. I think she's trying. Like, uh, yes, I, I don't know if this makes sense, but she feels like a very floaty wrestler. I used to call Saya in her low end matches a bit floaty, where it feels like Lacey just like if she isn't doing like a spot, it feels like she's just kind of like there, and mm-hmm. she she doesn't have a lot of urgency sometimes, and it feels like she's not doing much in a match sometimes, and so it's like when she's doing well, like in this match, I really like her stuff, but sometimes it just feels like, what is she, what does she do? You know what I mean? Like, just in terms of actual match flow or, or you know, uh, building a match, it feels like she's kind of, like, usually the other person, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's it's hard to articulate I that, I guess. But I did like I did like her here, even though I didn't like the match. At least it looked quite good in it. All right. Um, I also like her new gear. I know we talked about it last week, but... Yes, I, it's I like very good. Gear. Um... Our next match was a three-way number one contenders match for the Wonder of Stardom Championship. Hazuki beat Hanan and Tekla in just under 13 minutes when Hazuki pinned Hanan with La Mahistral. Was that it? Her version of La Mahistral, anyway. Oh, the Hazuki Stral. Um, yeah, Hazuki Stral, yes, of course. Um, I don't know, this felt really disjointed. I think maybe as a th- three wrestlers to do a three-way, these were probably a bad pairing. Um, I think maybe you could have gotten another thigh slap and heavy hitter with Hazuki and Tekla, or you could have gotten another high speed side kind of wrestler with uh, Hazuki and Hazuki Hanan. Hanan. Yeah, but as a t- three wrestlers together, I did think there was just a little bit where they didn't fully connect together. You know what's funny? This match could have really used Natsupoi. Because <laughs> like, she's yeah. one, of, one of the best three-way wrestlers like in the company. Um... Yeah, I mean, it was a good match. I didn't have any, like, like beyond that. Good, and then the rest of it was kind of like, okay, there's there's something missing here. But I think that's fine. Yeah, I think it is it is very funny because uh, Tekla is just barely outpacing Carol Ito this year. Um, and, and this match contributed to that. Like, she's, she's inching her way away from Sari's driver um, in the wrestler of the year. Uh, ranking for me. So that's lovely. Um, yeah, I just didn't like this very much. I thought like some of it was good, some of it was bad. I think the Hanan Hazuki pairing is usually fun, and I had fun with it here. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, it was a Tekla match. Yeah. I'm a bit sad that Tekla didn't win this match, funnily enough. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes I don't get what they do because they set up a clear challenger and then they go left. And you know Tekla's going to challenge eventually because that's which that's and that's concerning because the longer a white belt reign goes on, the longer any title reign goes on, the more likely somebody is to end it. So I would have much rathered <laughs> Hazuki get the second or third uh, shot 
then Tecla gets mm -hmm. the second or third shot. Uh, especially because it's like, you know, right now we have the... I, I know we just said earlier that we, we try not to boot like, for Marigold too much. But right now we have the Marigold GP going on. So, like, a bad not to play Tecla match would not offend me. Like, I, it would just be like kind of like, <laughs> right. okay, okay, whatever, it happened. Let's, let's move on to the Mar Marigold Corican. But, like, they're going to wait until there's nothing else to talk about. And it's going to be like, okay, now we now you get Tecla really boy. Now you get to really dissect that match, Dylan. And I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's not something I want to do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, I kind of wish Tekla just went won here and then saved Hazuki Nats boy for a little bit down the road. Yeah. But, you know. I can't complain about Hazuki Nats boy, though. That's, I mean, oh, not at all. I mean, a little bit. We, we can a little bit. We'll talk about Nats boy in a minute. But, you know. Yeah, she was worrying me with those uh, UWF clips. I was like, "All right, listen, honey, get back to the twirling." Did you see? Did you see her at the at the press conference? Her and her and Hazuki did like know. a Yuji Nagata spot where they just slapped each other and then smiled and shook hands. And I was like, "You really have been watching a lot of New Japan." <laughs> see, if she's watching Yuji Nagata, I think we're fine. And, and no, yeah, one percent. See, yeah, and you know what? We'll talk about. Later. Okay. We'll talk about it when we preview. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so our main event then was actually a preview tag for uh, Mike versus. It's not my main. What? Oh yeah, yeah. That's high speed. <laughs> um, yeah, the E Nexus V, Mike, Waka, and Hanako. The return of Hanako eating Tam Nakano, Natsupoi, and Yuna Mori of Cosmic Angels. Hanako got the win for her team over Unimon in just under sixteen minutes with what the website has as Egret. Yes. Um, Wait. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It was the. Uh, it was the fucking Strowman head and arm choke. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Totally. Where she like. Um, where she like carries them in the air and like chokes them out head and arm like that. Yes. Yes. I just um, remember. I just remember Braun Strowman did a really bad word. And that yes. used to be a finish. Remember Braun Strowman. Yeah, he was People called Roman Reigns night. bad when Roman Reigns like made that man's career. It's pretty crazy. That was like uh, that. That was a real feud. To be fair, it was a lot. How did wrestling? Um, how were wrestling fans so blind to Roman Reigns for so long? Like that man was that man was carrying <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> um, but anyway, Hanako debuted a, a slightly new look here. She had um this like dark blue and black gear. Uh, she had new hair. Um, it's like mainly black with blonde fringes or bl blonde highlights uh, i think this is a real upgrade from her in the looks department um i think the gear is fantastic and i think the hair is great as well um and she, just generally she clearly like leveled up uh post her little i don't want to call it a it was an excursion they call it uh, kind of but it was only a month you know i think it was just a story device but either way i think she she came back with a big upgrade and Can she I get got a, a lot joke of focus. off real quick Go ahead. Uh, for the second summer in a row, Megan Bain and Utami Hayashishta came out together in a very strange instant as Micah and Hanako <laughs> came out and, and had a great tag team match. Like, not great. It was, it was all right uh, against, against Cosmic Angels. Also at the expense of Tam. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Um, they did give Hanako a lot of spotlight, even though this was meant to be about Micah and Tam, which I think says a lot about how she's going to get used going forward. Um, and yeah, the, my favorite part of this match was honestly the Micah Tam thing, where Tam did her like cutesy pose, and Micah just kind of laid down and was like, "Hey, I'm here too." And I was like, "That right there, that is world title shit. That is what I want to see." Uh, I loved it. Great vibes from the the Micah Tam pose off. That's really it. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I, you know, I, I got my joke that Mike is cosplaying Utah, is cosplaying Megan Bain. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was fine. You know, Hanako looked good. She did look good, uh, generally. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't as crazy about the Micah Tam build as you were. But then again, like them doing the, you just don't get like it. Micah, not, Micah, Micah, Micah doing it. the like, like, I'm, I'm a hot dude pose, and Tam being like, I'm a cute girl pose. That was, that didn't really do much for me. Um, Graceful. As it as it did for you clearly, uh, but yeah. After the match, Micah adopted Rian, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, not into the group, just into a tag yes, match no. against. She was like, "Hey, I want Micah. a preview tag. Let's do it." Yeah, yeah I thought that was kind of part of New Blood, which I think is weird. This is weekend, having the the world title uh, program on New Blood, I 
I guess it's to sell tickets. Yeah, why does like I, somebody in in the Discord mentioned that I was a bit harsh on New Blood, but I am kind of wondering why does New Blood still exist, especially with the card they just gave us this week. Yeah, I I kind of got it when it was partnering with other groups and and like using their wrestlers, but I think there are more other like wrestlers the on the use. show after. <laughs> yes, they like got the, the Inabuzz. They got the Inabuzz and Kohaku for a pay per view and not New Blood, and I was kind of like, that's the opposite. That's but you know, it's it is kind of a question though. I do think like if you're not going to do New Blood as New Blood, you don't have to run it. You know, like it can just especially not twice run it as a month. normal show. Yeah. But maybe it's just a once off and they're setting stuff up. I know they did they did still have the ice ribbon wrestlers want the tag belts. I don't know if that relationship is dead because there's been no crossover since. Um or maybe they're just waiting for the Hanako Waka inevitable challenge. Um but I don't I don't really know about the ice ribbon thing. So yeah, maybe Sukasa. I, I said it last week that Sukasa angrily showing up in a uh, in Mari Gold killed that relationship. I don't uh, think the I don't uh, think it did. Taro Okada would care. He just had Mari no. wrestle with the Marigold World Champion, and she pointed at the Marigold belt at one point. So I don't I don't know if he's really that interested. Um, but yeah, I don't. Uh, that was that. Our main event, as you said, was a high speed championship match. May Sarah and Zena wrestled to a fifteen minute time limit draw. I thought it was good. A lot of points it was really good, and then they were kind of slowed into a lull, um, which kind of took away from it. Um, but, you know, I think for Zena's first high-speed match, I think she she showed herself really well. I think she acquitted to the style quite well. She was a good base for May Sarah to do kind of like the cool counters and all that stuff. There was the one Tilt-A-Whirl, was it the Tilt-A-Whirl backbreaker, and May reversed it into like a DDT. That was really yep. cool. Um, and that was kind of when it excelled, which was when Zena was kind of just the the base for May Sarah to do her cool shit. Um, I think I like this more than most people uh, because I really like this match. That was a lot of fun. Um, I felt like Xena, given that she doesn't do the style, did very well doing the style. And I also think that like this is this was a May Sarah's May Sarah style match where that lull is expected. It just is usually a bit more of a I don't know, it's, it's interesting, because this match, layout-wise, was the exact same layout as the Hazuki match from this year, which I adored. I thought it was one of the best singles matches yeah. of the year. Um, so layout-wise, it was very similar to that, but I, I think that like just some of... Uh, I think some of Xena's inexperience in the high-speed realm uh, kind of maybe made it a bit... Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, it wasn't as good as that match, but I, I think it might have... It, certain instances may have been a bit weaker. But with that being said, I thought that this was really good and a great performance from Xena. Because, like, I don't know. I, like, the more I start thinking about it, the more I, I'm, I'm trying to, like, really figure out where Xena lands on the list of, of best foreigners in stardom. And, I, like, most foreigners can't do this. Most foreigners wouldn't mm. want to do this. Like, foreigners of Xena's style, I mean. Ryan May was never going to do a high speed title match and like really commit to it as much as I love her. And I think she's tremendous. She just wouldn't have like, I, I don't think she would have done as well as Xena would did here, for example. Um, and I know comparisons the, is the theft of joy or whatever. So I'm, I'm trying not to be too like, you know, individual with my comparison. Death of joy on <laughs> comparison is the death of, is the, is the something of joy. I don't remember. It's crazy. Uh, there's, it's like a, that's like a famous. <laughs> We're talking about a high speed title match here. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shakespeare? I know. Whoa. Yeah, I think it is. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, everything's attributed to Shakespeare when, like, Shakespeare didn't say shit. Crazy. Whatever. Oh, yeah. No, um, he's quite poor. Um, I don't have to read his stuff. But, and I was like, he's not like all that. <laughs> he's not, he's not a wordsmith over here. Like, he's not yeah. He's not this quote guy. Um, all, but, of his, all of his uh, plays were just like, Jewish people, really bad. Me, good. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sure, I guess. See, my favorite potentially racist poet is Edgar Allan Poe, but I'll move on. Um, not potentially, uh, but I, I, I'll, I'll move on. No, I, I think that like Xena just shows up for these things. I think that's really cool. I like the half crab spot uh, where Xena like trapped May's arms. It was just like, no, you just 
Shakira's not going to get out. Oh, yeah, that was kind of <laughs> like, cool. I thought that was, right I thought it was long. She, like, pulled the arm back so she couldn't get the ropes. That was yeah, really I thought, cool. Yeah, I thought it was a bit long-winded. And, like, by the time it went to a draw, I was like, oh, that was, like, some time waste there. Yeah. But I thought that it was interesting time waste. I was like, that's a cool way to, like, make a submission spot, like, interesting and feel threatening. Because how the fuck does May get out of a move that she can't grab the ropes on? She eventually, like, just barely got her arm out and was able to. But, like, that's a very interesting way to do a submission. That's just, like, you can't get out. Yes. That's it. Uh, and I thought that, you know, near the end, it was very good. I, I thought Xena did a, a another submission. Xena's submissions are surprisingly good as well. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, like I feel like her, I feel like Daga being a Lucha guy probably helps that. Because Lucha I mean, yeah, Daga's core is very psychological and technical i know mm-hmm. people know lucha for the flips but it is very like you do have to have a very good base especially so I, I daga's brand of of lucha is that like he's mm. very like the the more quote-unquote like lucha stuff what you would think of lucha stuff is more of his like back pocket stuff yeah. like his main his his bread and butter is a bit more of the uh technical a bit more methodical in a good way like i think methodical lucha is very good and, you know People think of bad wrestlers when they hear the word methodical, but people can be very good at it. What's that one um, guy? Virus? Virus? He's very virus? good at it. Virus? Yeah, he's, he's, he is. Yeah, he's, he's very yeah. good at it. I saw him exactly. in Mystico, wasn't it? And it was just like, he was just torn. Oh, yeah. Mystico, that was beast, man. That's great. Shut up, Mystico. I don't hate no, technical like, wrestling. Most people are just really bad at it, you know? I, I know what I'm talking that's about. <laughs> Sometimes. I don't know. You, you have some, well, some uh, bad takes on technical <laughs> wrestling, uh, okay, regardless. Sometimes. Um, uh, but but no, I thought, thought Zena did. About Zina? Can we? <laughs> because she's fuck. Like I'm I'm at the point where I was like, shit, is she is she's number know. one? <laughs> no, she's not number one. Come on. I don't know. It's it's between like her and Jamie for me right now. I, I feel uh, like you have uh, to go back into the archives. There was a lot. That's of that's what I'm saying. Like I'm talking like post 2017 because I've seen pretty much everything from 2017 onwards. Okay. Uh, of that's, of yeah, that narrows it down a lot. Course. Okay. Yeah, and I think of them, it's definitely her and Jamie, and Mariah is probably an outside third. Yeah, I feel third. like we you you might be underestimating Mariah. I think she was great, like really, really strong. I mean, the rose gold stuff was fantastic. Yeah, I think I think Zena not having like a, a tag team run is is what's kind of setting her back right now. Is that it's like every every great foreigner had like a a tag team run that kind of made or braid. The, made or broke their time in stardom and she hasn't really had that she's had the artist run that didn't exist so i think it's an interesting case in that way but we can move on oh this was a great match very good all right um yeah xena good but um also good we have new blood this weekend to preview on the 13th of september in aichi which is interesting in the aichi chunichi hall um in the opener at least i assume we have Rina and Azusa Inaba taking on Aya Sakura and Yuna Mori in a preview tag of what is presumably the next future title match. Um, you probably give Azusa and Rian the win because they are the tag champions. So they yeah. probably beat maybe over Unimon. Are they 50 50? They might just 50 50. Um, maybe. They also brought in maybe, a new rule oh. for tag belts, um, which kind of might get played up. Is that only, yeah, only one wrestler has to be eligible for the future stuff. The other teammate can just be whoever. So wait, but okay. You no, know, for the for the tag belts, for example, Mayu would realistically team with Ariane and challenge for the new blood tag belts. Is that like is that like with the power of hindsight? Because like Hanan turned 20 this past month and she just became ineligible for her. I think that I think that might be it is that when Gori by most metrics wouldn't be eligible to have had those tag belts this year but maybe maybe there's I think ha- yeah yeah I think I think it you might just be a like rules. that is one thing that I do like rules and his rules you know they, I, they I, embrace the high I like rules and they like and rules. now you have new <laughs> tag belt rules so I think that's just the, yeah something they like uh, and I, I appreciate it. Like I said, I think that it does kind of make sense because uh, then it, except for Umasaki and, and 
I guess Karma debuted last year, so you know, yeah, matter. you can you can wreck on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd imagine the tag champions get a win. Just to get the tag champions. Um, the next match is Starlight Kid and Mio Masaki of Neo Genesis taking on Tomoka Inaba and Hina of God's Eye. Um, Sounds fun. Yeah, I could. Well, I mean, Tomoka could beat Kevin or Kid could beat Hina. One of those is. Quite like I think it. I think either of of Neo Genesis can beat Hina right now. Hina lost to her sister, man. Yeah, but I don't think Neo Genesis <laughs> like... has many wins at the moment. Exactly. So... This is one instance where she can. I think that's my point. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't see it. Um, our next match is Hanan and Saito. That, ha- that Hanako render is crazy. Look at that hand. <laughs> that is insane. It's almost like she's flipping people off because her other finger is out of the picture. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, it is Hanan it's and like Saito. It's AI. <laughs> does, actually, yes. Uh, they're taking Where's on Waka and Hanako. Are you looking yeah. forward to Hanako beating Ida? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt some folks. I think that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, it's gonna happen though. I think this goes to a draw. Mm. I think I think it goes to a draw. I think it it, it cements Hana and Waka. Hanako and Waka as like we can do this. Maybe maybe. Either way, I think this sets them up for a challenge. Yes. No. yes. Especially, um, especially if Hanako, since since Hanako isn't the next future challenger, uh, I think just given her the new blood belts probably makes sense. Definitely. Um, our next match is Rani Agami versus Konami, which could be fun. I think they've run this before, and it was okay. So you know, Konami's that was the only win. that was the only Konami singles match of the year before the five star, or no, before great. the Sherry match. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. It wasn't and very have... good, and I, I think this will probably be <laughs> maybe possibly. I'm into Konami. Uh, in hate, so I don't know. Um, but our main event is Tam Nakano and Sayaka Karara versus Micah and Rian. You maybe have Micah and Rian win, and Micah like offers Rian a spot in the faction, and somebody else comes out and says, "Hey, no, we want Rian," and then Rian joins a faction. I think you're thinking too hard. Possibly, but she is the only freelancer left in terms of units, so got to get a home soon. Yeah, uh, I mean, Rian's not winning. I think Micah might pin. Micah would Kamara. win and be like, hey, we yeah. team really well together. And somebody else would be like, actually, I think Rian is crazy good. Let's bring her into my group, you know? Potentially. Maybe Neo Genesis? She has wrestled a lot of the Neo Genesis crew. How old is she? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that matters. <laughs> it's... Uh, she's... Oh, she's, she's, a, she's a few years younger. I mean, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Well, she. Know. uh she kind of fits the vibe though, with like the pink and the bright blue and stuff. I think she's very Neo Genesis. And they could do yeah. a pin ear, probably. You, like a proper pin ear. You know, I don't want to dive into discourse, but why do the factions still exist? Because they're cool and they sell merch. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. you answered. <laughs> That's really. Like, it. I'm just, I was thinking about. I was like, I was like, it feels mm-hmm. like none of these factions actually want to team together outside of like Neo Genesis. <laughs> like, I feel like they're just there. Like, you know, like it's just a uh, happenstance. I just thinking of the Nexus V. They're a bit scary. Mainly, mainly. Um, speaking of the XV, uh, they open up the pay per view this weekend. It is Stardom Namba Grand Fight 2024. Aeon Osaka Arena number one. Um, this it's an early start. It's a three o'clock start, so you know I think that's very early for for us. Um, there is a pre-show match of Z uh, versus Rian. That's gonna be fine. I won't watch it. Um, but the actual show kicks off with Mina Shirakawa versus Saya Kamatani. A pretty big match. This is free on the YouTube as well, so I'm interested to see how this does views wise, given. You know, it's a pretty big name. She did announce it on Twitter. Uh, Sai Kamatani is obviously the hot new commodity. So will this drive viewers to the YouTube? Will this make them buy the pay-per-view? I don't know. That is clearly the strategy. Um, I imagine Sai Kamatani wins. I don't think Mina is going to beat many pushed acts at this stage because they know she's leaving. Um, so I think Saya over Mina and just maybe continue the idol killer stuff that hate is on. I don't know. They like non finishes on pay per views. 
I feel like I feel like it... yeah, but pinning Mina is like a free, a free get at this stage, like a free hit. But is it? Because I feel like Tony Khan might get upset. I don't think he remembers <laughs> she's around until he's booking Ring of Honor. So kind of don't now maybe Rev Pro would have an issue because they she is their champion. But at the same I feel time, like I feel like this could, could very easily. I feel like this would very easily be similar to the Mina versus Natsuko match from earlier this year. It just was really bad, and then it ended. <laughs> because, like, yeah. from DQ or whatever. I don't know. I think they want to rehab Sai, though, after the Micah loss. I think it's an easy get back as her beating Mina. Potentially. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to this match. I, I think, you know, I... I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt, and when we argue about it next week, everybody will say, "Yeah, obviously." So, it's just yeah, I mean, because like, now. I I historically like am not as keen on on this pairing. I think they're a good pairing, but uh, they're both in like their worst form right now <laughs> uh, in in a few years. So, huh. okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe not Mina. Mina, it, it depends. She she had some rough times. Yeah, you can't uh, you can't tell about Angels. Mina. We we sat through the Joker thing. That's yeah. Okay. Well, since since like the since twenty two, I would say That's not very long. But the, anyway, the last, anyway, the last matter. Joker thing matter. was doesn't matter. Was doesn't, matter. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Walker Skiama and Hanako versus Hina and Rani Agami. That is another Hanako win, I would imagine. Uh, our next match is Sayori Ano, Yuna Mizumori, Aya Sakura, and Sayaka Karara of Cosmic Angels versus Natsuko Tora, Rina, Raka, and Azusa Inaba. I almost Hits feel bad NJTO. for Ano because that is a real, like, damn. <laughs> Ano got the, the kids. So, yeah, they're getting beat. They're going to get scrapped. Seven times to Sunday, yeah. Yes. Uh, we have a really good-looking six-woman tag. It is Starlight Kid, May Sarah, and Kohaku of Pro Wrestling Wave taking on Koguma, Saida, and Momo Kogo of Stars. These are some of your guaranteed uh, delivery people. Yeah, as long as they just go up. like fucking four minutes, I'm 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 sure it'll be. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I mean Kohaku win? really leaning hard into Kid. Kid winning. Yeah. yeah Kid or leaning quite hard into pushing her. Well. May does need another challenger, and she has three potential challengers on the other side, and two next to her. So <laughs> we'll see. Like, I, like Kohaku can get a win and be like, "Hey, May, I want that belt." Uh, or, or May Sarah could roll May up, or Ida can roll May up, Koguma can roll May up, and you know, be like, "Hey, I want a challenger belt." So, like, if 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 they're aim, if this match's aim is to set up a new high speed challenger, it could literally be anybody. Um, if it's not, then Starlight Kid just wins. Okay. All right. Um, our next match is Siri, Saki Kashima, and Lady C of God's Eye versus Momo Watanabe, Konami, and Tekla of Hate. This um, is a long card. Yes. Uh, I have Saki Kashima winning and then her and Siri tag challenge. Challenge for the tag belts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That definitely um, should be what happens. It should. Uh, our next match is a special singles match. Suzu Suzuka versus Tomoka Inaba. They are who? running it back. Did you say who? You, you, you said it. Uh, what? No, I didn't. Called her Suzuka. Well, listen, who cares? <laughs> Suzuka. I was like, wait, that's... I said Suzuki. I definitely said Suzuki. Just... You definitely... Man, okay. Okay. Anyway, this is a good match. This is going to be good. Uh, these two had a great match on the Takataichi Mania show a while back, and uh, this probably won't be on that level because Suzu isn't that wrestler anymore, but I imagine this will be really, really good. Probably goes to a draw, I have to guess. Uh, potentially. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I agree with you. I think this match will be a little bit sad uh, because they had such a <laughs> fucking... Uh, they had such a tremendous match a few it's years so ago. It's depressing. <laughs> Uh, that it's gonna be like, oh man, Suzu Suzu ain't in in that that form she used to be in, and yeah. uh, Tomoko isn't as as hungry as she used to be Tomoko. necessarily. I, I guess we both did it, huh? Tomoko isn't <laughs> isn't as hungry as, as she necessarily. So I think you know that'll be a bit of a bummer, but I do think that like the floor for this match is still pretty high, as long as they don't do any dumb shit, like a uh... double count out. <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah. 
Our next match is another preview tag. It is Mai Uitani and Hanan taking on Azumi and Miyu Amasaki. This is what that shit's about, man. Hell yeah. This is real wrestling right here. I would imagine eye contact gets the win in some manner. Um, and then Azumi and Mai probably make a challenge. I, I could see I could see Azumi roll up Hanan. Uh... Neo Genesis won the other match, though. So, in Karkin. Oh, yeah. That's true. So, I'd imagine eye contact gets one back. I don't know. I, maybe. Yeah, I, the way they built the matches are, is a bit uh, strange and a bit Got brain. random. Yeah, it, it's a bit random, so I don't think I think I'm thinking too hard about this. Uh, either way, it'll be a fun match. Um, the next match is the Wonder of Stardom Championship match. Natsupoi defends against Hazuki. This will be exceptional if Natsupoi is back on that shit. Um, and yeah, she's going to retain. Well, I don't know. She, she loves UWF. Um... Does. And I, I, has, hey, we'll beat that out of her, don't worry. So do I. I also love UWF. But it is a bit strange. You know how, how we were talking about how Sai Kamatani is like the last person that should turn here if she did? Yes. Natsupo is the last person that should embrace UWF styles. Yes. Like like if Hazuki was like, you know what? I'm 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 watching rings tapes. I'd be like, you know what? Sure. That fuck, Jesus. <laughs> like you're gonna kill someone, but that's that's cool. <laughs> Natsupo? <laughs> What? I'm so excited there about this. The thing. idea of 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 Hazuki just Rings becoming Hazuki. a shooto psycho, like yeah, <laughs> like that would be that would be insane. Natsupoi, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah. She's hanging out with Sari uh, too much. Get get her away. Like like and like, legit, like I, I was thinking about it. I was like I was thinking about how many other people I would like be cool with being like you know what I'm a I'm a learn some UWF stuff. And it's most other wrestlers. Um, because Natsupoi is so good at what she does that she doesn't need to do anything different. Why does she want to do something different? Stick to, stick to the twirling. Stick, to the, stick to the stuff you know. Stick to the status quo. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. Please, stick to please the stuff stop. you know. That's a high school musical. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, It'll be a good match. Because, like, Hazuki... Hazuki and white belt matches is like the greatest wrestler maybe ever. Um, so you know, but you know her hit rate is probably yeah, the incredible. greatest. It's probably the greatest in white belt history, and she's never held the belt. Like that's insane. Um, that's probably helps, just in fairness. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, she never had the Avery challenge. Um, but Damn, yeah, I don't know. Poor Avery. <laughs> he was cool. She never had, I liked Avery. She, she never had the the Kagetsu challenge either, which was. A great match. Um, surprisingly, Risa versus Kagetsu wasn't that great. Um, you are the only person who thinks that. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was that one. They're, 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 one of their matches was good, but one of them wasn't. I don't remember. They had a title GP match as well. I think maybe the GP match was the bad one. Possibly. I don't know. Did say one that of the... was the white belt curse, so I'm going to assume it was the GP one. Probably. Uh, that, yeah, no, you're probably right. But yeah, like. Hizuki is one of the greatest white belt challengers of all time. It's a shame that mm -hmm. that is the distinction, but it'll be a fun match and she's going to lose. Indeed. Uh, our main event then is the World of Stardom Championship. Tam Nakano defends against Micah. <laughs> the GP winner cashes in immediately on the World Champion. Um, I, need listen... to, I need to read something real quick. Okay. Go ahead. Keep, keep going. Thank you. Oh. Um, the, Taro Okada, I do not put it past him to do another V0. I'm going to put that out there right now. If he does a V0, I will not be shooken at all. But I'm going to assume Tam retains because this is the Cosmic Company now. And she was just crowned as the big baby face ace against Tora. And I'd imagine they're going to ride this wave until there's a Saya Kamatani challenge. So I'm assuming Tam wins. But I am not putting anything past Tara Okada. I wouldn't even be upset with a Micah win because Micah is pretty cool. And uh, I mean, I guess you'd get Micah Saya again, which might be interesting. <laughs> or should they do a Tora? <laughs> you just hear the, the life draining from Dylan. But yeah, I think there's okay. like enough with either one. But Tam makes the most sense. So I need to draw everybody's attention to the uh, press conference where uh, Tam was 
getting wine drunk and saying that nothing matters. You were never a real champion. Who cares if I lost every match in the tournament? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm going to beat you. You will have never been champion and I will be the best. Like, like I will be the true top of women's pro wrestling. That shit's insane. She got wine drunk and started being like, you were never champion, bitch. The fuck? That is crazy shit talk. <laughs> and she's going to win. <laughs> she's going to win. I'm, I'm she's so, going to be proven I need, correct. I need she's going <laughs> to... Tam, Tam, legit, Tam was, was in between sips of wine. Was like, you were never champion, bitch. You were interim champion. That shit don't count. You, lo- you, didn't even, you didn't even beat me, bro. You didn't even beat Tora. You suck. <laughs> and she's drinking wine. Oh, yeah. I'm the kind of shooting. I like it. And she's going to win. <laughs> yes. Good. Oh, man. She should I win. Need, I'm, I'm, I I'm happy that she's winning. But that is so funny. That she's just like, who cares if I lost all the time? You were never a champion. <laughs> Michael's like, I, I quite literally was. And she's like, nah, I disagree. <laughs> That's great. Um, one note on this is there is no singular section sold out, which is pretty not This fun. is in Osaka, Edie on one, isn't it? Yeah. Oy. They used to sell out the front row seats pretty easily, and a lot of the young adult women ones as well. But like now they have nothing gone now maybe that's because their website hasn't updated properly like i don't their website's pretty weird lately but uh, as of now there is nothing sold out so potentially not a great attendance but we'll have to wait and see on the day um but that's all for stardom i believe uh, if the schedule comes up um yeah i mean technically they are running next wednesday in aomori but there's no card for that running thursday in aomori as well but again no card so it's it's no real big deal. So we can get on to Marigold. Ooh. Yay! Um, I don't think there's any news from Marigold. That, you know, I don't think they've announced anything. There's no Monday Magic or Noah stuff that I can recall. Um, it's been a pretty quiet week from them, apart from the show. Like that was kind of all they, they, they did. did. They did announce uh, a match for this coming weekend. It's it's Utami's birthday match. It's a trios oh, match. We can Fucking that. sick yeah. match. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, if I can get the card. That is always the hard part, is finding the card. <laughs> you know, for, for the Marigold. Um, yeah. Because they tweet a decent amount. And I think they're running twice this weekend. So Let's go to media. Got... Oh, that is a crazy, a, a crazy, a crazy idea. Um, wait, they're running the 14th and the 16th? Why, why aren't they running the 15th? Yeah. That's odd. Okay, well... Because well, it's a Corkin show, isn't it? It's a Corkin? So they to get what they can. Which one? Yeah, there's a Corkin next week. The 16th. Oh, that's Beast. Okay, I love it. All right, their, let's, their let's first get to Corkin. it. Okay, well, um, well, we should review first, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. So, the show that happened this past week was on the 8th of september it was in the belfort tayama on the second floor specifically second floor and they announced a sellout 305 fans now whether really that nice is venue. legitimate it is very nice whether that attendance is legitimate or not is up to you it was maybe 20 seats on each side of the ring if that adds up to 300 that adds up to 300 i'm not i think there counting. was like a i think there was like a, a bleacher section that was um... probably was yeah i just but also hot crowd like the crowd was pretty was, was pretty it? decent. Yeah, it was it was pre- especially for uh, Nanai versus Misa. I didn't get to watch the last two matches. So of I'd, course, Nanai is the was, one. But yeah, with with Nanai and Misa especially, it was pretty. And Tommy Yuzuki. Uh, I, I think yes. Those. Oh yeah, they were into that. Okay. Well, let's get into it. Uh, in the opener, which I didn't watch, Kazuna and Marai beat Chiaki and Myla Grace in eight minutes. I will not be watching the non-tournament matches. It I sounded. Apologize. It sounded like a good match. Like from on paper, Myla's been doing. The other three are good. But I didn't yeah. watch it either because I, I, we, this came out this morning, yes. so I didn't have time. This, this literally only got up, um, on a few hours ago. Uh, Wrestle Universe, yes, that's the one. Yeah. So yeah, we we squeeze it in. Um, in the first match of the uh, tournament, we had the Dream League. Nori beat Pika Goto in five and a half minutes. Wow. Okay. Um, oh, small small thing. Uh, for every tournament show. They have a ceremony featuring all of the competitors of yes, that day, yes, I which like I really that. like. I, I think so it's funny. it's cool because so you know, like it, it, it gets to you know, it, it shows you the you know, 
however many wrestlers are wrestling that day and all that. I, I, I like I like the pops and circumstances. Yes, it's great. Are you whistling um, the Marigold theme song? Yes, yeah, damn right. It's <laughs> it's, it's really catchy. Um, yeah, this was, I thought it was a good match. I thought you know they paired off really well. Chica was like fighting from underneath, and Nori was like, "I'm going to kick you in the skull and submit you." And I thought they were paired off really well like that. So I was surprised it was five and a half minutes. It felt like they did a lot more than five minutes yeah, of the wrestling. I will say it felt a bit clunky, which is to be expected from two very good but inexperienced wrestlers. Um, like I, it's not something that I hold against them really. But otherwise, that was a lot of fun. I, I thought that mm. just like a lot of the spots were really cool, like Nori kicking the fuck out of her arm. Like, just, like, when she was, like, like she goes, like, coming at her, like, to try and go for her forearm, but her arm's oh, just yeah, in the air, great. she's going at her, and then she just kicks I was like, that's sick, I love that. Um, and then, you know, I, Nori kind of whiffed on the finish, she kicked her in the hair. Mama. Yeah. But, you know, it's it hard. happens. No. Yeah, we don't uh, mind. I, I thought it was a fun match, regardless. It's anything short of good. Mm-hmm. Uh, our next match was also in the Dream League. It was Utami Haishishta beating Victoria Yuzuki in eight minutes. Uh, this is a lot more eight like minutes. it from Yuzuki. Like, this was, they put her firmly in the box of Babyface, and she was rallying people against Utami. And Utami yeah. was doing really well in that, like, power ace spot where she was just kind of like, she was throwing these, like, elbows and, like, forearms and shit that I've never seen her pull out. And she was, uh, she was really beating on Yuzuki. And she Yuzuki was. Fuck up, man. Yeah, Yuzuki was like really fired up. She was, uh, I haven't seen her this like yelling and getting the crowd into everything she did. Um, like, this is a real step forward for Yuzuki. So I think, you know, put her back in her box and she did really well. And I thought Utami was, was very good in her spot, which is really funny because at one point, these types of matches were her weakness. She just couldn't do it. Okay, them. to be fair, I'm starting to think that was just the Unagi match. Ah, no. I'm starting to think Unagi just kind of sucked ass at that point. I'm not going to lie. No. <laughs> like, I've, I've gone back and watched a couple. Of, I was like, no, she wasn't that good. Um, Unagi. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know. 20, 2021 Unagi was... 2021 in general was fucked. They, 2021 was 30 good. 30-minute house show loop draws, like, consistently. That, that, that was a problem, it was, yeah. It was the a draws crime were. against humanity. Good five-star, though. Um, generally. Was that but like yeah, no, I, whenever or something? Because was that it was the, one of them? That was the Takumi one. It was the Momo yeah, Shuri yeah, one. Yeah, it was that the, was crazy. Yeah, the um, TP was nuts. Tam, Tam, that Tam was like the only white belt wrestler to not fully succumb to the, 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 the curse. Yeah, no, sure. that was that was a great in, year. in years. Uh, yeah, no, I I thought this match Utami <laughs> versus Yuzuki going back to what we were talking about um, was very good. I thought it was shorter than eight minutes. It felt shorter than eight. Um, so I was kind of shocked to, to hear that it was, it was eight whole minutes, but I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I thought that Yuzuki did show up and I, I knew she would, and I was really happy with it. And Utami, I, I just don't see her having like any bad matches in this tournament. If I'm being honest, like, I was like, I don't, I don't know if she has it in her to like drop the, bu- I'm not going to win, obviously, but like, I, I don't know if she has it in her right now have anything less than like a solid match uh because this was this was very good and i enjoyed it a lot the uh, the biggest rarity of all time utami hit the shocking bla- baszler and it looked good like it actually looked impactful like that, yes. that move doesn't usually do <laughs> yeah. that uh but i thought it looked good and it was a it was like a you know convincing finish so i was i was cool with that Tommy was selling her head i don't know like was that a thing that yuzuki did uh, that I think one, an was extension her head? got ripped out, and it might have hurt. Okay, because I was gonna say, before. is she okay? <laughs> yeah, no. Like, cause she, yeah, I think she like did like a bridge, and she, her head just like she sold her head real bad. Um, she seems fine, as far as I can tell. She's taking pictures with my Yuki. He and, um, so I'm sure <laughs> yeah, she's they're fine. drinking. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that made her feel so better. Fun. Uh, yes. but yeah, that was a very good match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I've been critical of Yuzuki, but like they really, she went back to basics here. And even improved on some of the stuff that she wasn't speaking, as good at. And speaking of someone that I have been critical of, uh, the next match, even more impressive, in my opinion. Ooh, okay. All right, let's get straight into it. Um, it was also in the Dream League. Koki beat Natsumi Shozuki in 11 minutes after dumping her on her fucking head. <laughs> That's yeah. all. I don't know the name. I don't have any idea. She picked her up in, like, 
uh, the way you would pick up a child to like salute them around and then just went <laughs> and threw her. Yeah. And I think it's actually a Takako in a way move. I think she used to do a similar move. She'd like pick them up on her shoulder. It was, and it, it, them. Okay. I think you're, 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 it was a pretty simple move. She just picked, she's like back soup, but like just like, oh, and <laughs> she went over. Yeah, no, it was uh, great, honestly. Like, it was she insane. The full rotation. It was insane. Um, and then she tried to like get her into a roll up thingy, but, and they're just kind of rolling her up a little bit and uh, pinning her. So that did take yeah, it she, down. She just... The finish was quite a uh, clunker, but like the rest of it was good. I, I didn't think that the, the roll-up was that bad. I think she legit like was trying to roll up, and then she's like, oh, I think I killed her. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could just pin her. Uh, which, correct. Crazy, I, I, this was, I, I this had to was... rewind like twice for that powerbomb, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It was, it was nuts. This was maybe the best Koki singles. I mean, it, it was the best Koki singles match, in my opinion. Uh, in Mario so far, yeah, I think it was better than I don't know. Um, oh, I loved crazy. this match. Okay. I, I thought this match was super good. I thought, and and maybe it's because the Iona went twenty minutes, so yeah, it it, it kind of gave Koki more time to uh be a bit more uncomfortable. Uh, it, but I I think Koki very clearly is very comfortable with Shozuki, and it, it made this match great. I uh, thought that that she really just showed up and she was beating the fuck out of her. It's funny because I I was thinking about skipping this match uh, because I didn't have time and I kind of oh. wanted to get to the main event. Uh, and then I like started watching it. And I was like, maybe I can't. And then I just started like getting into it, and I was just like, this match is really good. <laughs> so I'm happy I didn't. I thought it was a very good match and one of my favorite Koki performances I've seen. I thought she did a really great job. As it shows Zuki trying to break her arm and shit, but you know. Yes. That was good. Yeah, no, Shizuki was definitely good at leading it and just letting Koki yeah. pick her spots. Um, and then, yeah, Ko- Koki tried to she, kill her in, in return. Koki hit, like, a diamond cutter at one point, and I call it a diamond cutter because she did, like, a random setup and got it with the, di- with the cutter, like, just out of nowhere, just for fun. And I was like, that's sick. And then she hit the best dominator she's hit. That was sick. I was just like, she's doing her spots. She's doing them well. I'm, I'm happy with this. Oh, yeah. Um... Our next match then on the show was in the Star League. Nanai Takahashi beats Mitsu Matsui in 11 minutes. This was great. Oh my god. Nanai Takahashi, the wrestler that you are. Misa Matsui, when her back is against the wall, she is so good at that role. Like she's just so good at those like sudden switches of momentum. She's great at selling. She's great at getting the crowd into her. There was a couple of near falls there that looked like 2.9. And you like the crowd is going bonkers for them. This was this was insane, dude. And I, holy cow! Yeah, um, I hope this was on par with their uh passion injection match, which was tremendous. This was, better. This was probably, um, better. I don't know, if, I don't know if it was better because that match was like my favorite, my first favorite uh Mario Gold singles match, uh, like by far. It, it did, it took a while to be topped, in fact. Um, I was about to make a joke that I shouldn't. Um, but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a great match. Uh, Short haired Misa returned. I, I think that that was what was needed for her to really kick the shit into gear. Because uh, I, I I think she looks cool with the short hair, and I thought that she killed it here against an eye. Because funnily enough, we we compare Misa to Natsupoi a lot. She did arm work way better than I, Natsupoi does. I've never heard is... anybody make that comparison. You literally did because she had the extensions and she did the pose. Remember? Oh, I mean, she did look like her, but not in like a wrestling sense. No, but like no. she did copy her entire look. At one Correct. Point. Uh, but point being is that I think she does the limb targeting that like Natsupoi should probably do if she wants to be a limb targeter. She shouldn't. Uh, that like I thought Misa did a great job here. I stayed mostly unspoiled from the show, and I think that really helped this match specifically. Uh, because it was just so in like it was just so exciting to see Misa, uh, you know, like almost get an upset. I think that was what made this, what in one instance made it better than the passion injection match was that like Misa had an upset potential that she didn't have, uh, early on into into the the run of Mari Gold. Right? I felt like this was a match where it's like Misa could have pulled out the win here. Uh, and I thought it was it, that made it better. I think maybe the work was pretty much the same, maybe a little bit weaker than the Passion Jackson match. But I thought this match was just super good. One of my favorite of the tournament so far. Um, yeah, you, you brought it up uh, on private, so I don't know if I should no, say in a, it. That... In a group. Oh, was it in the group chat? Okay, yeah. I was going to mention that. Um, okay, go ahead. 
Yeah. So I do feel bad for Nanai Takahashi. This is what I said. <laughs> I gave I gave Scott a heart attack. He must have been like, oh no. Because um, I was like, yeah, I feel bad for Nanai. She is having a an incredible year. But because yeah. Mayu and Sari are Yusei and bolting their way to the finish line, she's not really going to get the consideration she deserves for being one of the best Joshi wrestlers this year. Because it, it is just the Mayu and Sari show. Like it is ridiculous how much Mayu yes. and Sari have lapped the field. But Nanai in any normal year would be right in that conversation. I think I'm, I'm looking at it. Nanai's consistency is like on par with Sari. It's just that Sari mm-hmm. has like, you know, these, if you want to go on stars, these four and a quarter, five star matches like every other week. <laughs> and Nanai doesn't. You know, she just has like these like consistently really great matches. Uh, just not, you know, like. <laughs> So, to, to put it to put it clearly, Sari and Mayu are both in three of the best matches this year. Yes, for me, uh, two, two of them, of them together, <laughs> and then one of them is against each. So so yeah, like that makes four, right? They four of the ten best matches this year include Sari and Mayu. Mm-hmm. That's not fair, <laughs> especially to someone like Nanai, who has been operating at a super high level, uh, despite you know not wrestling that much uh the the amount of matches i again i'm kind of going into spreadsheets it and i'm sorry but the amount of matches i've seen from nanai this year are the same amount of matches i've seen from sari this year and like nanai is so good that she like beats the people like she's she's better than the people who have consistently good matches because her matches are just consistently better than most of them you know what i mean like she's just insane this year but mayu and sari <laughs> So yeah, I, I totally agree with your kind of assessment there. That's like someone like Nanai Takahashi has been having an incredible year. Uh, just really a, a non-stop great performance after great performance year. But people like Sari and Mayu are kind of too good. <laughs> yeah, I, I put it in more uh, comedic terms in the chat, but I probably shouldn't say those words in public. Um, so... Okay, yeah, no, I, 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 <laughs> oh really? Okay, yeah, no, you'll you'll find it funny. Um, but yeah, no, I think Nanai is just having an exceptional run since Marigold has started, and she really deserves a lot of credit for it because there was times where even I thought she was done. Like after that injury, I thought her ceiling run was very okay. Like she was clearly getting carried by some of the best wrestlers in the scene. Um, but now she's just had a whole new life in Marigold, especially with this actress crew. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I read. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think like Nanai deserves a lot of credit here, and this was this was fantastic. Her, her, and Misa did it really well. Um, and yeah, they probably would have stole the show if not for Sari existing. To be fair. Yeah, I haven't got to see that yet, but I'm assuming that it's like you know, it's 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 Sari. Um, yeah, I I loved this. I thought it was really really good. Um, it's the last match I got to watch on the on the card unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought that Misa, as much as we give Nanai all the credit in the world, because Nanai is one of the best, at, th- at this point, Nanai, maybe not like a top five best ever, but I feel like she's getting pretty comfortable, comfortably near like a top 10, top 15 oh, I don't me. know. There's too many. There's like so many wrestlers. I don't know. You That's you, just, you haven't you haven't seen like some of her really high-end Dark Ages stuff, though. I've seen like she, her AJW stuff, though. With her and who? Where the fuck? I've seen her in Emmy as well. I saw her in Emmy from her and her and um Ayako Hamada had like one of my favorite matches ever. Oh, is that 04? Me, I don't have it right now. But yeah, it was it was yeah it was 04 or 05 I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like like she's just insane or like the the ice ribbon tag, her and Emmy from uh, against best friends. Like there's just so much good to not. But for Misa's credit. I think that like Misa, when she gets the opportunity, she almost always knocks out. Of the- um, I-, I was I was a bit worried starting the tournament because of those first two matches were, you know, combined eight minutes pretty much. Yeah. Um, I was a bit worried that they were just gonna kind of write her off, but this match really like put her back into that. Like, no, she's one of the best wrestlers in in the company still. She just doesn't always get to necessarily show it because her matches are a bit you know shorter she doesn't get as much offense she just isn't as you know 
respected, frankly, as some of her, her contemporaries, which is a shame. But I thought this match was just an example of her being like, hey, by the way, I'm still like, you know, one of the best singles wrestlers in the company. Just so you know. Yeah, that's fair. Um, no, I, I'm not going to like downplay Matsui. I, I was very high when they got her. It was kind of like she and um, Miku were like the two where I was like, okay, yeah, they're, they're going to deliver. Um, and she's definitely she's definitely done it. Um, but that's uh, enough on that match because we should probably just yeah. wrap it up there. Um, to get back to the thing. Uh, so we had a Star League match then. Bozilla beat Miko Aono in nine minutes. She stole Aono's finisher and hit her with a Styles Clash because that is what <laughs> Bozilla does. Um, I feel like I might want to rewatch this because I thought it was pretty good, but it didn't hit high levels because it went nine minutes. But it was. I often see people talk about this on Twitter, and I never really get it until it happens. It was like uncooperative, but in a really cool way. Like they mm. clearly weren't in step with each other, but that was almost part of it. Like Godzilla would be like stumbling around, and Miguelona would be like trying to get her in a, in a roll up to like get her up. But it was like, yeah, you would do that when she's stumbling around and not ready. So there's some elements of it like that where I was like, okay, this is like really like physical and well done. Um, but then it only went nine minutes, and the flow was kind of just the same almost as the other match. So it's one that I might need to check out again. But I thought it was really good for what it was. Like it's, it was only nine minutes, and I think you know a full high end Bozilla Iono match should be able to tell their full story because I think Iono chopping down Bozilla would be perfect. Um, they haven't really done that yet, so yeah, I thought it was pretty good. And probably like a very interesting match to to some people and what they like, but I think it still wasn't that greatness that I would expect from these two. Um, mm. You know, I, I think it was still enjoyable. Like I think the whole show was really consistent in general. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my thoughts on that one. Um, and then the main event was in the Star League. Sari beat me, my Sakurai in eleven minutes. Um, I'd have to double check. This might be my best favorite match of the tournament. They just went crazy. My Sakurai was so willing to fight back against Sari. She took the, she actually like hit her during the entrances. Like she was going for it. And Sari, she like was like stomping on Sari's injured wrist and Sari just got pissed. And uh <laughs> she hit another shoot headbutt that made me like gasp. Oh my god. Like I like my <laughs> mouth was open and I was like, what the fuck? She clunked this girl in the skull. Um it was insane. Like it was so well done, so stiff, so well paced, so fiery. Um, like my Sakurai now has two or three of the best matches in Marigold. She she was really stepped up to the plate there, and I thought this was this was a great match. So if if you can only see one match from the show, it'd probably be this one. Like it was it was insane. Yeah, I'm super excited to see it because I mean my Sakurai man, <laughs> like like yeah. obviously. Like like we've said, it's like Sari and Mayu, you know, they're gonna have good matches, would have thought. But like my Sakurai has really been stepping up and we've been saying it a lot. And I'm super happy that that's the case because they need someone like my Sakurai to step up. Um and you know, they had that match uh, a few months ago in on, on a house show that I thought was good. I liked it. Uh but I know like some people didn't like it. I know Xavier is high. Uh just because it felt kind of just like, you know, Sorry, is kind of toying with my and my not really being able to rise to the occasion there. And I'm super excited to hear that my Sakurai was able to rise to the occasion here because that's kind of what she does now. And I expect that from her. Um, but I also don't. So it's still impressive to me, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, I, ex- I expect it more because it's like, okay, I've seen you rise to like meet these top wrestlers. I've, I've seen you outwork Julia in a singles match against Julia. You know, I've seen you do a lot of great work this year, um, but it's still kind of impressive to me when she just hits it out of the park with someone. And so I'm super excited to see that match. All right. Um, we can't really fully do it, but um, I, I guess we can like do a top three of the tournament so far. Uh, you obviously haven't seen potentially the best match. Um, so my number one... I think it's a tie, honestly. It's it might be the My Sakurai and the Nai match, or it might be this My Sakurai Sari match. 
but mm. those are like one, two, in some order. Damn, two of my Sakurai. Um, yeah, my Sakurai is still on my list, my top three. She's not my number one. My number one is still Mirai versus Nora. Mm. Um, nice. From from yeah the the night show of the first day, um, and then my number two is Nanai versus. And my number three is Nanai versus Mai. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. My number three is either Nanai and Matsui or Nori Mirai. It's pretty much a dead heat there. So um, basically, we're the same, except I haven't seen. Yeah. Your number one. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. As, as, as tends to happen with these tournaments, um, we kind of fall in line. Um, yeah. My Sakurai, a tournament MVP. Who knew? Um, She's up there. Yeah, that was that was a fun show. Honestly, it was really consistent. Um, and it was I clicked onto it and I saw the runtime of two hours, and I swear I almost swooned. Like I, we the world needs more two-hour wrestling shows. I am I'm not about three hours. I'm not about four hours. I have other stuff to do. <laughs> like let me go play games or, and read books. I do not <laughs> I, short shows, please. So this dude reading books. That's crazy. I don't believe you. I, that is crazy. You call me illiterate. That's that's insane. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If <laughs> yeah. you can read one page of a Harry Potter, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I'm not allowed to read Harry Potter. It like burns in my hands. Oh, to drop. Man. <laughs> yeah, that that was Marigold. Um, there are two shows coming up in the next week for Marigold. Uh, the first is on the 14th. Um, I don't know where this is. If it would translate, Jinky the first ring. ring. Nice. Okay. So non tournament. This might be action. the only time that I watch a nine tournament. That's fair. It is uh, Myla Grace versus Nawishikawa versus Minami Yuki. Not that so, one. <laughs> no. Um, then we have a Star League match. Sari takes on Chiaki. Oh, sweet mother. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Sari's gonna oh, win. Though. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. I'm I'm excited to see Chiaki back in tournament action because I was really yeah. stuff from the first day. So yeah. All right. Um, we then have a Dream League match. It is uh, Victoria Yuzuki versus uh, Koki. So I should pull up your sheet. That would be very smart of me, wouldn't it, to have the blocks it would. ready? Um, I think it was we had decided it would be Yuzuki over Koki just to like. Continue that little tag grudge. Um, maybe I don't know. This, this, this is a bit hard because I feel like uh, I don't know. Koki's obviously the favorite, but I could see Victoria Yuzuki upset here of anywhere. Like I think it's a mm. to get upset. Uh, I think Koki, Koki is only on two. Yeah, I thought Koki was on more points. No, she only she's only had two matches. And she only won. right. Okay, I can see Koki then getting that one. Um, our next she match. Still has, she still has a couple top wrestlers to like lose to. You know, I mean, she still has a Mirai. She still has probably a Nozaki loss. Uh, and you know. Uh, and then I think the Chika Goto match. Chika Goto and, and Nagisa are both toss ups for for Koki. So I I think this match should probably go. Okay. Um. The next match is in Dream League. It is Nagisa Nozaki versus Nori. Uh, Nori is on five points, and Nagisa is on two, but she's only wrestled twice, I want to say. Um, yep. That's probably Nagisa Nozaki winning. Um, Nori kind of having her momentum stalled. Yeah, I think I think Nozaki can win there, and I think I think Nori over like a Shozuki, and then beyond that, she should probably start losing. <laughs> yeah, for like, sure. I I think that you know she needs to take some loss because and this is this is a good tiebreaker being... as well because yeah, they'll probably yeah. come into play. I I'd imagine. Um, yeah, so I think Nozaki. Yeah, for sure. Um, our next match then is Star League. My Sakurai versus Bozilla. Bozilla is currently on six points. She has run the block, and I could definitely see her falling to a my pan roll. Yeah, maybe. Because of my win there, and then like, like... I think that could, that's another one that could help with um, tiebreakers come final day. Like my Sakurai finishes level with somebody and Bozilla doesn't go through because she has less tiebreakers I think, or something. 
Yeah, I think I think a uh, my Sakurai win here does make sense because like Yeah. I, I could see a my Sakurai win. I didn't initially you know. But I could definitely see it. I'm not right. I'm not certain of it. Yeah. Like right. it is a pretty odd way. It would be a, it would be a very out of nowhere uh upset. But yeah. I kind of like that. That's very yeah, no, it's uh it would be fun. Especially since Bozilla just beat Miku, it feels like, you know, she has already beat one of the three other top wrestlers. She needs mm -hmm. to fall to one of the bottom four. You know what I mean? For sure. Kind of um, give and take. And I'd imagine Mai still beats Aono, so I think that would get her kind of up to the to upper echelon in the block. So It's true. Um Yeah, because my stock hasn't gotten many with yeah, no, she hasn't. Uh, but speaking of my Sakurai, or not my Sakurai, Miko Yono, uh, our next non-tournament match is Utami Hayashishita, Mirai, and Misa Matsui versus Natsumi Shozuki, Miko Yono, and Chika Goto. That is crazy good. It's Utami's birthday match, and uh, I imagine she wins because it's her birthday, but you never know. Yeah. This is her and Mirai. It could go to a, pretty hard to beat. It depends on where this is placed on the card. Oh, that's true. Uh, because it could, could go to a draw. It's 15. I don't think it would go 30. I muted um, to avoid that, but it didn't. No, you're, I, I only heard that a little bit. It's okay. All right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could see Utami beating uh, either either not, either not Shizuki or Chikagoto, and Shizuki can get that win back in the mm -hmm. tournament, if, if that does happen, uh, as an upset. So yeah, I, I, it is her birthday. She should probably win. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. All right. If Misa um, was on the other side, it would be pretty. I would be like pretty. I'd be like, oh, obviously, loses to Utami. But yeah, for sure. With Misa there, it's a bit difficult. Uh, for some reason, this is listed last, but I doubt it is going to go on last. It is uh, Star League Nanai Takashi versus Kazuna. Um, I doubt Let's that's the main go. Event. <laughs> but uh, I guess Nanai, since she's one and one, she can go up to two and one. Oh yeah, Nanai definitely. That uh, I. Yeah. But I'm okay. excited for this match. This feels like a. I don't know. I love passion injection matches, game. and 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 uh, you know, Kazuna. Yeah, Kazuna is exactly the type of person I want to see in a passion injection match. You know, what I mean? that's fair. That's fair. Um, our next Margold show is on the sixteenth. Uh, this is at Corken Hall. It's a half eleven start. Jesus, that's like the Early. night time for me. <laughs> I'll be the, I'll be asleep. Um, oh yeah, that's like seven thirty p.m. for me. That's crazy. That's something. Insane. Yeah, eight thirty um, maybe. I have they announced non-tournament matches for the Korokan? They have. Um, it's probably at the one. end. Yeah. It's it's a uh, it's Koki oh, it's versus yeah yeah Koki versus Yuki Minami versus Nashikawa versus Grace. Uh, Miley Grace Ooh. is missing uh, a Jonas Brothers concert in Ireland for store, and she wanted. That is really disappointing. Yeah, she said she so. said y'all need to know how much I love this wrestling shit, man. I miss Jonas Brothers. I could have gone home. I could have gone home for this. I'm pretty sure she has like a partner and kids. <laughs> but she's like, nah, I'm missing the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> Fuck them kids, man. I want to see the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> That's crazy. I want to um, live in the year 3000, man. Oh, oh yeah. man. Um, we kick off with uh, Chiaki and Misa Matsui in Star League. Um, I don't actually know. Right there. They both have no points right yeah okay they, they will both be walking into this likely sorry uh we'll both be likely walking into this with two so an o's gotta go uh screw it chiaki chiaki uh -huh. i think it's chiaki. Yeah, like chiaki so yeah i think miss matsui is um, gonna have a suffering bill's character that's yes fair. that's fair um in the star league then we have my sakurai versus kazuna um i think kazuna over my if champion loses to potential challenger. That would be cool. Like a an upset there. Uh Kazuna definitely also has a hard path to victory in yeah. any of these matches pretty much. So I think this is one of the matches that she could win. So maybe. Okay. Uh in Star League, Nanai Takashi takes on Bozilla in Corken mm. Hall. Oh, sweet mother. Uh, this That's got to be Nanai, draw. baby. That's passion. This might go to a draw. It could. They touched on 15 minutes last time. 
they might have actually gone over 15, like a small they bit. Went so over. I could see them. Yeah, like they went slightly over. So I could see them going 15. Uh, I don't know. It, depend, I, it depends. Because I think if if my soccer beats uh, Brazil, like we kind of expected, I think that Brazil can beat Nanai or go to a draw. But if if my soccer doesn't get that upset, I think Nanai has to beat Brazil. Uh, because she would, she'd already be at six points. Um, no, she she'd already be at eight points. Yeah, she'd basically be like in the final at that point. So, yeah. so you would need an Anai win. Um, so yeah, it, it depends on that my soccer match. Uh, I could see a draw. I wouldn't mind a draw. I think that like a draw would be interesting, and it would, it would keep them both a little safe. In you a know, sense. your internet must be a bit weird because your every half word is kind of. Yeah, in, it's in, it's in very out. strange. My uh, my connections it's my connection's stable but it keeps just randomly being like nope it's red even though it's still on 50 oh. ms so it's like i don't discord being discord i guess yeah uh, i think i think this is a discord issue because it's it's being very strange without actually being a problem i don't know that's weird All right. um but yeah i think i think it kind of depends on the my soccer match but mm-hmm. bozilla has to lose one of these matches i would say <laughs> okay we'll see that's fair. Uh, in Star League, Sari takes on Mikva Iono. I have been very certain that Iono beats Sari since the tournament started, and I'm going to stick with it. I'm thinking a draw. Mm. Well, I have Bozilla going to a draw, so I can't have another draw. That's true. That is a problem. I don't know. I think, I think this match has to... I think this match goes to a draw. I think... I think you know, Sari... It's, kind of, um, it's one of those, like, death taxes, Rollins beats Reigns. White belt over red belt in a GP. Kinda, but I also I also think that like I don't know. I have no. a, I I know my thing is getting bitchy. Um, but no, I I think that Nanai might be the only person that I think Sari was right. I think Sari kept saying that there's only two people that can step to her in this company in this block, and it's Nanai and Bozilla. I think she will be proven right, and I think those are the two people who will beat her. I feel um, like we've proved her right every step of the way. Somebody's got to beat her ass. So uh, let it be Mika Iono. I'm not post, but I, I, I just... I think Iono also bad. dropped to Bozilla, so I feel like tiebreaker... Home, like, home tiebreaker day, she might need that win over Sari. Oh, that's Otherwise, why I'm leaning more towards draw with that. Mm, I suppose. Like, I, I get what you mean, but I, I think I'm leaning more because of that. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, in the Dream League, Chika Goto takes on Victoria Yuzuki. Um, Chika is on zero points. Yuzuki is on one. Hmm. Uh, maybe Natsumi or not? Not Natsumi. Uh, Chika Goto. I think Chika winning would be cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, in Dream League, Nori takes on Natsumi Shozuki in one of the highly anticipated matches of the tournament. Uh, Shozuki probably wins. That would take her up to five. And I think we'd have an effective tie at the top then. I think a Nori win here makes sense. Uh, I've, I've been inquiring how much Nori weighs, not because I'm weird, but because I'm wondering if she's in contention for the belt. Because uh, if she is, she should definitely win this match and get the challenge. Uh, hmm. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, like other people are going to challenge coming out of the tournament, so I'm not sure. Yeah, but there's like four, there's like, okay, there's three people in the company that can challenge realistically for that belt. Yes, uh, weight and wise. two of them have already said they want to challenge her, and are like, yeah. one of them is in this block. So so I think I think Nori, <laughs> this is the third time I'm saying this, this could draw, but I think Nori, <laughs> I, think, I think Nori winning here well, would make sense. So I think... better roll it back. You know, you can't, you can't do all draws. No, I agree. I agree, but I think I think this is one instance of like one of the last instances is that I think Nori is kind of my favorite because uh, otherwise, like she has a new Tommy match coming up. She has she has some matches that she is realistically going to win. Um, so I think this match, I, I'm kind of like okay. I can't hear you anymore, but we're just gonna. Oh, I said I said this match. Where I'm leaning Nori. All right. Um, our last. I think that was because I started mumbling, not because of my internet. <laughs> Probably. Uh, our last match is the Dream League. It is Utami over or versus Marai. Um, 
<laughs> Utami over Murai. Yeah, so I think yeah. Utami is on, what, four points? I think your sheet is updated. Who uh, did she just she wrestle? Beat Yuzuki. Yeah, there. So Utami has four. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, what the fuck? What? Oh, that's why. Yeah, it's. I can see Dylan editing this live as we speak. It's very funny. Um, Mirai doesn't wrestle a tournament yeah. match on the other show. Neither do. They're both in oh, Utami's right. birthday tag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I had Mirai, I think, before the tournament. I thought she would win this. Um, and she probably does still win this because Utami she... can just beat, like, Chozuki and Nori. Yeah. And she'd be up to an eight, and that would kind of keep her in contention. I, I think I think Mariah needs that tiebreaker, ultimately. Even though she yeah, has a draw, sure. Uh, so it kind of doesn't matter unless Utami gets a draw. Well, I mean, Utami's last day is Koki, which is very much banana peel be draw. draw fodder. Yeah, for sure. So I think Mariah getting the tiebreaker is important. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So I think uh, regardless, I think Mariah wins here. Yeah. Okay, that was pretty simple. Um, that's that for the show. Um, we're done somehow. We'll be back next week to uh, discuss this Marigold show. As oh well boy, as... next week's the last block preview. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Because um, next week we'll we'll talk about uh, Morioka, Sendai, and Korkin, I think, maybe. I don't know what day Korkin lands on. Uh, the tournament, and then... sure. Ends on the 28th, so. Yeah, so next week we're going to be talking about the last non-finals days of Oh, shit, okay. Yeah. Previewing well, them, obviously. I don't know how we're going to do that, because next week we have the, the stardom reviews as well, but we'll figure it out, guys. Don't worry. It's previews. Um, it's previews. And, and late, tournament. Late, late tournament previews are just kind of throw your hands in the air. I don't fucking know. Yeah, you know that's I mean? true. Especially when there's three shows. To, yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. Okay, well, we'll be back next week to discuss all of that, um, especially the stardom pay-per-view and the Marigold gp as we've done we'll look ahead to what's happening i think stardom has a bunch of house shows they're not really doing a lot uh, whereas marigold is continuing the with the final stages of the tournament um but yeah uh, unless you have any closing remarks it's time to close the show uh i probably do but i can't <laughs> think probably do okay all right well oh uh, uh, uh john moxley oh. ruined my life and i am distraught to this day, <laughs> uh, ban violence and over wrestling. those, I said, over those, over those two bald bastards turning on their best friend. That shit was that whoa, shit. Whoa. That shit upset it's me. Hey, I'm slurs. bald sometimes. You have slurs. I, it, it's fine. Crazy. Bald less. They can't be using that. They're they're bald and they're they're attacking people because they have hair. Uh, uh, um, sorry, yeah. I, I realized this is a separate friend group in joke, and you don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, no. Because in another friend group of mine, we have a friend who's bald, and he's always like, stop using that as a slur, and it's really funny to all of us. Uh, so we call it the B word, or we'll like blank out uh, the A. Um, the bald word? Yeah, the, <laughs> the bald word. He's definitely said that. <laughs> he's definitely said that. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. So yeah, bald is a slur in uh, in one group chat. It's, it's see, but I, I am sometimes bald. Like, I've, I've shaved, I've razor shaved right, yeah. my head before. You see, so no, I, like, I don't think I, that counts. I'm reclaiming it. I think that's cultural appropriation. Anything. Of who? <laughs> the bald word people. <laughs> the bald community? Okay, we can move. Let's, let's close the show. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to stand, you may stand. If you want to sit, you may sit. Believe today, shine tomorrow. You decide what you believe in. Ejo. Ejo. Stay golden. Yeah. <laughs>